Alright, when we last left our band of intrepid adventurers, they had made their way to the lair of the Hobgoblin Bandits, and after some cheeky manipulation of their enemy's own traps, pushed forward and engaged in a heated battle with the humanoids. A series of amazing rolls, flashy spells, and crunchy swings later, we find the group preparing to push forward deeper into the lair. This was but one room, and to leave without dealing with all the bandits might do more harm than good for the locals. So now let's rejoin our group as they begin to search the rooms and halls of the lair for treasure and foe alike. You know, like adventurers should. Well, the uh, right. hallway lays open before you. A series of hobgoblin bodies scattered around you. Well, I guess we move on. And I will move slowly and carefully, eyeing everything for traps. All right. Well, you do spot one thing out of the ordinary. In the hallway beyond, there is a streak of blood that leads from the door. And around the corner, you spot a crouched hobgoblin leaning against the wall. But after a moment, you realize that it is actually the dead hobgoblin from earlier. His chest torn open by the magic missiles that were hurled through the door. His uh -huh. wounds seem to have been uh, hastily patched and stuffed with cloth, but his allies seem to have abandoned him once they realized it was far too late. So, uh, so he's dead then? Yes, he is. Okay. Super dead. Oh, good. As the group of you are about to move forward, Angela stepping over the, uh, slumped body of the Hobgoblin, Thalatha will feel a soft gust of breeze come from the wall to her left. Thalatha just kind of... Let's out a little gasp. Uh, everybody could probably hear it. And she just turns to the wall and she says, Oh, I just felt a tickle from the wall here. The wall tickled you? Yeah, it must have been like a little gust of wind or something. Oh, 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 that kind of tickle. <laughs> that, that would have been scary. I guess we shall examine that wall more closely since apparently there's a passage. Fortunately, after a great amount of searching, Tobias is able to find the Ooh. button that opens the wall. One of the bricks well, sinks inwards, and the door slides open. The doorway opens up to reveal a narrow chamber full of Ooh. several boxes of trade goods. It looks as if these stacks of boxes and tossed-aside sacks hold much of the ill-gotten gains of these hobgoblin raiders. Okay. The uh, group of you are able to rifle through several boxes, sacks, barrels, etc., 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 and you find several items of interest and much, much more of no interest. Grain, dried corn, vegetable. But you do find, slipped beneath one of the large barrels in the back that you are fairly sure is filled with some form of alcoholic beverage, there is a pouch that has been stuffed, probably by one hobgoblin who wanted to keep what he found. There is a set of silver nuggets inside of it. Seven hmm. of them in total of varying sizes, worth about 150 gold pieces. Oh, wow. That's a score. In addition, one of the chests has armor. All told, just these items being sold in town, uh, should you be willing to carry the heavy chest of armor back with you, would probably be worth around uh, 300 gold pieces. That is very nice. Now, for the piece de resistance. Okay. The door that you came through is not the only secret door that you find in this hallway. Oh... There is another secret door in the back corner of these ruins, and this one, oddly enough, is so covered in dust and gathered mold that you are relatively sure the hobgoblins have not even been making use of it. They may not even know that it is here. The door grinds to the side, revealing a musty and dank central room. Ooh. So Angie will peek carefully around the corner. A small oh. moat of glowing light comes from a rather shimmering fungus cluster on the roof of this room, and it sheds a dim, strange light on a single wooden box in the back of the room. Lotha looks to Angie and goes, can I open it? Sure. All right, she takes a couple steps forward and she, I guess, pushes the lid off. Oh, oh no. Oh no. 
As Velatha strides across the room, she feels just the lightest tug on one of her shins. Nailing the trip line causes a series of gears in the ceiling and in the walls to begin turning and spinning wildly. And before you can react, a series of large swinging axes slide down from the oh stone no. ceiling above, cleaving through Velatha and Angie as they slice everything in the room. Oh dear. What? Hey, up. Okay, what kind of healing do I need to do now? Probably be dragging pieces back. <laughs> Velatha, surprisingly, despite being in the center of the area, has a pair of blades pass directly on either side of her, leaving her completely unsaved, except for a few spatterings of hair that drift down to the ground. Only the penitent men shall pass. <laughs> Unfortunately, despite being probably one of the most penitent individuals in the group, Angela was never taught by her grandfather how to duck. Oh. Uh, raising her shield in an attempt to block the incoming blow, she finds that the sharpened steel is more than a match. It buries itself through her shield, slams into her body, and pins her against the wall. Ow. Before yanking back forward, practically wrenching the shield from her hand and swinging back up into the ceiling. Don't tell me I lost my shield. Uh, no, but it's got a nice hole in it now. Hey. Uh, you take 15 points of slashing damage. <sighs> God damn it. A lot of standing there, these two giant axes just freaking swung in front of her and behind her. Uh, she's totally frozen. Um, her skin color, if it was possible, becomes even more pale. And she's <laughs> standing there, just... You can see her trembling a little bit. She's not making any sounds. And she will be like, I'm all right. <laughs> Let's hope this trap doesn't reset itself. Look, you said it was a box, so was it like the kind of box that has the like the lid automatically opens? Is, is it a lid that can be pushed off? Uh, no, it's like a it's like a crate. Mm -hmm. So the metal bindings on top of the wood kind of hold everything in place. It looks as if this was made for long term shipping. Yeah, you know, wherever I can find a gap, I, I'll I'll stick the blade of one of the hand axes and just try to use it as a, a little crowbar. All right. Contains more than a dozen completely rotted books. Oh. These tomes have long been consumed by mold. Not realizing the fate of the books, Tobias will just kind of plop back on his haunches, and his ears are going to lower. He's j he just looks very sad. However, there are also a pair of fine jade idols in the shape of a uh, crouching woman holding up a scything blade with both hands. Uh, the shape of the moon, also the shape of the blade that slammed into your chest earlier. Taking a moment to recuperate from their combat and chance encounter with the treacherous swinging scythes, the party huddles together for a few minutes while Bethaniel prays, a healing light washing over them. With only this brief delay, wounds are soothed and hurts removed, and the best available delve deeper into the hobgoblin lair. Arriving finally at the bend in the corridor, the party cautiously proceeds. Very careful peek around the corner. Uh, you see that okay. the uh, hallway goes 10 feet and then ends in another door. Oh, great. Let's examine the door carefully. Can we hear anything on the other side? It doesn't well, appear then. to be trapped, uh, but you notice two things. There's the smell of sweat and waste coming from it. Ew. It is locked. Oh, great. Do any of my new and dear companions happen to have something we might use to pick a lock on your persons i don't know that i have much and he will start rummaging through his satchel what you know how to pick a lock i don't i won't judge if you do well angie will shyly raise her hand um i happen to know how but um i have no tools Tobias's eyes widen and then narrow curiously oh do you? Mm, what kind of company had you been keeping when you skipped town? Uh, well, I, I, I just learned this because I, uh, I, I thought it would be a useful skill when engineering. Uh, come on, what did you think? Uh, uh, it, uh Angela, I, I believe I told you when I, I joined. I'm a, a native of the Feywild, and you, you see, 
glamour and deception are native languages of the face, so uh, I'll just pretend that I believe you. Um, eh. it, it's not like I do a break in or anything. Come okay, on, guys. Okay, all right, all right, oh, all right. Okay. Uh, oh, there was that one time, but that, that's. I was a kid. That that was a different story. That was a misunderstanding. Of course, of course it was. Uh, just uh, let's find a I tool. I absolutely have faith in the tale you are telling. Trying not to dwell on the incredulous looks that she gets from her companions, Angela does her best to jimmy the door open with a few mundane instruments the party produced from their packs. After a few moments, a soft click tells her that the lock had been sprung. You can still roll with thieves tools and use makeshift tools. You'll just be rolling at disadvantage. I guess what we can do is quietly open it and, and peek into the next room. Okay, so you're just going to like try and open it a sliver? I think so, yeah, and have a peek. Taking great pains to move slowly and silently, Angela cracks the door a mere fraction of an inch. Any further would alert the veritable firing squad that held the doorway in their sights. Bows and crossbows alike aimed directly at their entrance. Having heard the prior commotion, the goblinoids were all on edge. Turning back to the party, Angela holds up a palm, counting from one to three, indicating their foe's numbers. Trying to keep her hands from shaking, the nerves of the mounting attack still quite potent to the young adventurer, she upends her potion of heroism, feeling a need for the extra edge it provides. The group readies themselves, and on her mark, they burst open the door, charging in with abandon. The devout among them praying the opposing arrows miss their marks. Angela rushes forward with a bellow, her sword and shield held high, just as Tobias skitters between Beth and Yell's legs, letting three magic missiles fly. The glowing projectiles just barely outpace the duelist's charge, impacting the hobgoblins on either side. Angela gives the attackers no quarter, lunging toward the one who'd just lost his balance and ending his final stand with frightening efficiency. Her breath staggers from a shock to her shield as the bugbear's bolt impacts it, the tip visible just above her arm. Tobias turns tail and slides beneath Bethaniel's legs to the rear again just as rapidly as he dashed forward, and just in time the cleric's shield drops, incoming arrows finding no purchase in the diminutive wizard. Galatha strides forward, humming a tune to herself and forming a series of hand gestures before she melts, shimmers, and divides into four fluttering bards. One real, three fake, they dance between each other hypnotically, like an otherworldly elven carousel. Just as she enters, however, the bugbear in the rear belts out a fearsome roar, and two more hobgoblin warriors rise from the detritus around the room where they'd been hiding. One rushes for Bethaniel, and the other takes a vicious slash at Palatha. The swinging blade takes her head off in one clean, singing arc until it dissipates into dust, leaving only three dancing bards, albeit all looking slightly more worried than moments before. Angela barely has time to react when the bugbear rushes her, a full head and shoulders taller and seemingly a lifetime meaner. The beastly brute brings a hooked and rusted Morningstar down on her with enough force to crush a lesser fighter, and though the force of the blow pushes her nearly a foot backward, her shield arm holds fast. The potion mixes with her natural warrior's spirit as she lets out a triumphant cry when she feels the advantage become hers to take. Feet scraping the stone floor, she angles her bulwark to the side and throws her strength into the motion, managing to shove the monstrous weapon aside, denying it its place in her skull. Bethaniel's toll the dead rings more softly as his focus is demanded, much more presently by the combat in front of him, his shield yet again taking priority over his magics. Velatha, recalling the tide-turner that sleep had been for their group against the harpies, extends her hand and commands once more, sleep. The bugbear, for his part, only roars, too vivacious to succumb to such soothing charms. His hobgoblin comrade, however, slumps to the ground without hesitation, a loud snore rising to rival the roar. Tobias, now very deeply appreciating Bethaniel's position as an elven shield, hesitates to rush forward, but resents the idea of cowering helplessly. He is a powerful wizard, after all. Settling for a compromise, the magic bunny lays prone, aiming down the sights of his finger guns and blasting the skirmishing hobgoblin with three more magic missiles. The bolts of energy take a deadly arc over his enemy's head, screaming around the defenses to impact directly into all he can see of his foe, his skull. The first impacts like a rigid uppercut, the second a strong right hook, and the third, betraying the wizardly showman's deadly intent, vaporizes the hobgoblin's skull into a cloud of minute viscera. Angela takes a step back, gaze fiercely locked onto the hulking opponent before her, but she knows a strong blow could lay Velatha low. Chancing the opening it creates, she slashes out at the hobgoblin instead, carving down its back and placing him firmly out of danger. Oh, 
danger to her allies, at least. Seeing an opening, Tobias rushes forward and takes his place in the corner, eyeing up the bugbear and trying to avoid getting close to the goblinoid filth. I'm going in my, my, uh, my safe corner. You slide slightly in the filth that has been squished into that corner, but you are now tucked away. Describe... In, actually, no, don't describe filth. Are you sure? Because I can. <laughs> Positive. I am quite positive. Get horrendously graphic. I, uh, yes, I know you will. With That's all the I excruciating detail. Yep. I don't need. I don't need that. No. Yeah. I mean, nope. so one, one of their primary food sources when not hunting is mushrooms, which they grow in. Cor the, you know what? Never mind. Corwin. Corwin. <laughs> I did say I do not consent. <laughs> the bugbear. Seeing his numbers dwindling rapidly, kicks his snoozing soldier awake, then tactfully retreats to the doorway. A blind swing behind him, countering the expected strike Angela took at his retreating form. The hobgoblin sits up drearily, only to be met by the dolorous tones of Bethaniel's magics. Left to focus on his craft, the death knoll rings true, and the hobgoblin slumps to the floor again, this time for an eternal slump. Velatha places a hand on Angela's shoulder, reinforcing her vigor with an arcane potency, and Angela gives a terse nod, then rushes the bugbear with intent to kill, eager to bring this fight to a swift conclusion. Tobias fires off three rapid plumes of scorching flame at the beastman, flying alongside Angela's strides, but the toughened bandit only takes a single lick before pivoting away from the threat, leaving Angela just enough room to stand between him and his escape, blocking the door. You step forward to block him from going through the door, and he goes <laughs> as you go clack and step on the trap. <laughs> God damn it! A uh, pair of poison-tipped spears shoot out from the wall next to you. Oh great! Ah, oh, unfortunately, you are very much not ready for this, and one of them critically hits as it finds a hole in your defenses and plunges into you. God damn it. The spears skewer the fighter, finding little resistance when striking her leather boots, and the poison seeps into her bloodstream from the wounds. She grits her teeth, rooted to the spot for now. But her fortitude is greater than the goblinoid's underhanded venoms. She's endured more toxic poison in the ship rations from her time at sea. Grunting with exertion, she doesn't let the pain stop her from bringing her blade to bear, carving into the bug bear, and leaving his side nothing more than a promise of more mortal wounds to come. She spots a crude symbol hanging from his neck, a mask half demon, half boar, the icon of Erith Mule, the god of death. Drawing her blade back, she nods to it. <laughs> Are you ready to meet your god? The bugbear gurgles, bloody foam bubbling from a grotesque grin. You first, human. The door behind her creaks open, revealing the party's worst-case scenario, and a guttural snarl reverberates from the chest of a monstrous goblinoid who looks eager to join the fight. He towers over Angela and even the other bugbear who looks like a hobgoblin in comparison and a frail one at that. Even with the potion of heroism in her veins, Angela's blood runs cold and Tobias lets out a sharp EEP. This fight was far from over. And that is where we will have to leave our party for the moment. A dangerous situation has most certainly just gotten worse but who is to say whether TBA is trapped in there with the Hobgoblins, or the Hobgoblins are trapped in there with them? The safety of the people of Golden Fields hangs in the balance, but we will have to wait until next time to see who stands and who falls. Thank you all so much for joining us, and I can't begin to explain how excited I am for the next episode. These last few years running the best available has shown me that it just keeps getting better, and I can't wait for you all to share it. I have to wait, though, because, you know, time is a thing that exists. Hmm. At least for now. Anyway, we are continuing to chug along at a fine pace. The next episode is already being worked on, and despite both of our artists taking a family trip, everything is on schedule. Well, except for the FDM magic items, which will be a little bit late, but I'm hopeful you'll love them when you do see them. Just a small update about our Discord server for supporters, the number of games is skyrocketing. We've got more Forgotten Realms, Ravenloft, Homebrew, Iron Kingdoms, and even Delta Green now. Several new DMs have started running games, and I was even able to play in a new one myself. 
Delta Green is a lot of fun. And just in case you're wondering, no, no, I'm not giving up my moniker. Not ever. <laughs> Hopefully you will come join us on the server and either join one of these fantastic games or even run one of your own. I'll try not to ramble on too much more. Besides, I'm sure you know where the bell and the little thumbs up thingy are if you've gotten this far. So without any further ado, let's go to the list of the true heroes, the supporters that made this video possible. In the power tier, we have David, Denny, Doodle Poodle, Jay Jones, and William Smith. In the planar tier, we have All Is Fiction, CJ, Darth Cavalier, Joshua Williams, Joshua Williams again, Natalie Fawcett, Night Archer, PPNTT807, and Sparkle Lord the Fabulous. In the adventurer tier, we have Breezebender, Alex, Bastion Falconrath, John R300, Justin, Katie, Mystics, Nevia Nezes, Rosula Streaming Network, Shadow Menser, and Sneaky GI. In the Quest Giver tier, we have Bird or the Cage, Drew Tucker, Kyla, Robert Mischief, Slathar Silcom, and V. And in the Townsfolk tier, we have Biz Adrian, Matus, Okada, Scott Stedman, Sergeant Humpty, Shu Genja, Spirit Radio, and Tom Brazo. As always, this could not have been done without our fantastic players, and of course, the creative team Doodle Poodle, Nala Fontaine, Shadow Wolf, Scorpius187. MC underscore Cheshire, Thriving Inferno, and the Forever Diet. Me. I am thrilled that you were able to join our party, and I'll see you in the next one. Good night, all.